Like you do me a deal, Jeremy. I would definitely do you a deal. Hi guys, and welcome back to Archie Hamilton Racing and to another video where today we are going to have an awesome day out and I can't wait to bring you along for the ride. This is going to be a tricky one. It's going to be a tricky one, but it's exciting at the same time. Um, well, you would have seen, you obviously, that my uh, my father, he passed away, and uh, it's been a tough time. It's it's amazing how, uh, well, it's not amazing at all, but it, I, I got a lot of advice from you guys in the comments being like, grief will hit you in different ways, and different, you know, it will just hit you when you don't expect it. And to be honest with you, the last week, it's come boff, straight in my face. And um, yeah, we're dealing with it, and we're, we're, we're moving on, but it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, probably just as hard as it was just at the start but we we are getting on and that's what he would want and that's what I would want and in today's video it's all about him really um, and this is because of a good reason I was basically on Instagram the other day just scrolling through as you do on an evening and uh, came across a car which I knew I recognized it straight away I knew I knew what it was straight away and this was his old car and this was it is effectively a family car, and I always said that on my channel. You might have seen on my channel before a Ferrari 550 Marinello, uh, the blue one. It was from the early days in the channel, um, and he decided uh, about a year ago that he wanted to sell it. He wanted to, you know, sell it and uh, cash in, so to speak, um, which is very understandable. And I saw the car on the internet, and it came up for sale, and I thought I would be crazy not to look at it with the view of buying it back what an amazing thing to have it's got an incredible history and it's part of me it's part of my family and i thought i need to go and see it i need to work it out and i need to basically take it all in see what the price is and should i buy this back basically so that's what we're going to do today and we're going to see the car we're heading to uh jeremy cottingham he is the he was close to my dad jeremy and he's got the car for sale and he's got lots of stories about it and we're going to see the cars which he has in uh sort of a few cars he has in stock and we're also going to um yeah see the car itself okay and i've just arrived at cottingham blue chip london this is the place where jeremy uh is uh is based like i say they, they he was really close to my dad they've done deals over the years and uh we're gonna see the the car which we're here to see but also have a walk around uh, his his stock because uh, he's got amazing stuff of all because I walked in and I was greeted straight away with this GT2 RS and it doesn't it just look absolutely incredible love it in the red with the with the black wheels etc and he was just t telling me that these are such that we know they're good news but he was just saying that they're literally there is so many of them going in and out of the door the moment they're here they're gone and isn't that just the best obviously i've had the gt3 rs and it was amazing but one day that is what i would love to own wouldn't it just be absolutely incredible to have a gt2 rs on the channel oh i just love them absolutely love them he just driven this from london today he is chaos and then an ff which is just here as well um not sure if it's for sale i'm pretty sure if it's here it will be for sale um and uh these sound absolutely incredible I want a Ferrari on my channel. I've, it's something which I've never done, and I do definitely want to do it at some point. Uh, but yeah. Oh. And here we go, Jeremy. Hi, Archie, how are you? Good to Good. see you. Good, this how is the main you? man. How you doing? Good, you? Nice to see you. Good to see you. So you're going to give us a little tour around, and we're going to see what's here. You are a wheeler dealer. You did a lot of deals with my dad. I did loads of deals with your dad. I bought a 250 LM off you, uh, from your father. And, two, Mc... and an Aston DB4 GT Zagato. McLaren? McLaren. We had, we had lots of deals. Lots of deals. So, so your father owned this for, for quite a while, actually. And um, he loved this car. It's quite an unusual spec. Yeah. I haven't seen many cars with... So, Tour de France Blue with tan. Yeah. There were quite a few cars, but there weren't many with this darker. Really? This is, this is not tan. It's, I think this is Coyote. Okay. So, more tobacco -y colour. So this is... So there wasn't many like this around? There weren't many like this. this. This is a rare spec. Plus it's got the... So this is quite a late car. So this is a 2000 on W, which is quite late in the production run. Um, and as they, as they went through the production run, they started... The factory started to give you more options. Really? So but they wanted to make it... They wanted to keep... 
the client, the clientele that wants to keep them interested in, 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 the, in the marks and yeah. give them a few more op options to wow. choose from. So this has got a Tour de France rear fastener shelf. You can see it's quilted. So this is the same as on a 250 Tour de France from the 50s. Oh. <laughs> um, don't worry, that's okay. On a, on a 250 Tour de France built in the 50s, they had these quilted parcel shelves in the back. Wow. And that's why it's called a Tour de France parcel shelf. Because you know something which is actually missing out of there is there was a, was a there suit. Set yeah, that's that's at home somewhere. <laughs> you might want I, that. Enough, yeah, there was a luggage set, and I and I I might know where it is. <laughs> you want? <laughs> but, but you can see that it's. Uh, I mean, the car is is it's a yeah. really really good example. I has it had any work done since its ownership? So it has. It's had so obviously DK. Yeah. Family business. Family right, business. Which yeah. I ran for Probably 18 years. Yeah. With my father and yeah. later on with my brother. Yeah. Um, DK still going strong, obviously. Yeah, very, yeah. Um, and DK just supplied this to one of their clients, to, to a really nice chap that does some racing. And it had a load of money spent put in the workshop. Um, and it had uh, quite a bit spent on it. Really? Because it, really it definitely was not as nice as all of it, as it is now when he owned it. It's definitely been sorted out. <laughs> yeah. It's got quite a big bill from when it, when it was built. Really? Well, you know, DK do things. Properly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so these then, how, where are they Where are they sitting? Oh, let's, uh, let's have a little look inside. Well, they're, um, do you know, it's funny because they've really, really firmed up 550 man alerts. I know how much you sold this for, and it ain't what it is today. I, I can tell, so I'm asking 145. Yeah. And I can tell you that I've he sold it for 100. Loads and loads of interest. <laughs> you probably did. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I actually have a really good client that rang me and said, "Oh, I could have bought that from Adrian for 100." And I said, <laughs> "Well, so could have I. I wish I did as well." But it has had works. It's had work, right? Yeah, so that's but, yeah. But don't forget, I, I get this a lot with cars where people will say, "Oh, that's only worth that because it sold for that." But realistically, sometimes something will sell, and because it's sold, you can't go and buy it because the guys yeah. bought it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, you can't go and buy another one. Like if you set me the task of going to find another car like this, and it is in immaculate condition, it'd be difficult to find. Really? Know? Yeah, this is a pretty rare spec. So this has got, um, these, are, these are upgraded wheels and brakes. Yeah, so you've got Enzo wheels. So they're not quite the same as Enzo because obviously an Enzo has a central lock wheel, but they're, they're, they're similar. Okay. I think these came from Novatech, I think. But anyway, they're upgraded. Right, they're upgraded wheels, shall we say. And, and for sure, a 550 is a great bit of kit. I mean, like, I've sold loads of these over the years and you know, the, the later cars, they're, they're, they're quite different to drive. You know, these, these early, I call them early, early compared to yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. today's Ferraris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just, they're just really cool, you know, they're, they're um, atmospheric engines. They're, yeah. So could it, could it be worth 200 grand, this? Well, so if I, if I was here today and I went, right, I'm going to buy this off you now, could it, is it going to go down? So the interesting thing is, I've sold a lot of F40s and, you know, yeah. Between my brother and I, we've sold well over a hundred examples, <laughs> and, and, and probably more than anyone in yeah. the UK, certainly in Europe. I mean, yeah. Apart from one guy in Germany, I know that sold a lot, but but we used to buy most of his cars, so that's okay. Pretty, that's <laughs> but the reason he sold so many is because we bought so many. Okay. I think, but um, most of the people that bought F40s, uh, they all wanted either super low mileage. Well, they wanted what I would call a celebrity owner or maybe a racing provenance ownership. Okay. So someone like ex Alan Prost or ex Nigel Mansell. And those cars were always worth 10% more than all the other examples. So, if we now bring that argument over to Maranello, something that's got celebrity ownership. Explain. Stewart, yeah. Todd Stewart, Ross Braun, who is, as we all know, yeah. very, very big in F1, who's got a lot of very, very special right-hand drive cars. Um, and your father, obviously. Yeah. So, you know, it's got celebrity ownership status. Nice. You'd do me a deal, Jeremy. I would definitely do you a deal. <laughs> I think what else is nice about this car yeah. is um, it's got the white stitchy on the blue dash. So this example yeah. is JK's from New. Yeah. This was Jamiroquai, frontman JK's car. He's got loads of cars, did loads of deals with, his, with your father um, and myself. 
Yeah. This has done half the mileage of that car. So that's a 25,000 mile car. And this is a 12,000 mile car. It's Grigio with Bordeaux, which actually is one of the nicest specs. I mean, if I was going to order one myself new, I would, it's funny because I, I would probably have ordered black to Nero Daytona with Bordeaux leather. So I manage a collection, uh, yeah. which I've been building for, for, for a really nice chap. Um, and all of that stuff stored at DK. Yeah. At our family storage business where we've got about 300 cars, which my, yeah. which my brother runs. So uh, nice. That's great, and I've got some cars safely up there. F12. So this is um, an F12 right hand drive. This is Grigio with Chocolato, which is a super cool spec. Is that what it's called, Chocolato? Chocolato. Now, I can say, I, I always wanted one of these. I used to have a, I used to have a 599 GTO, which I bought from Tom Hartley. Yeah. And I had a white one, and uh, I loved that car. It was brilliant, super, super good a kit. And I regretted selling it, and I, I, I sold it back to Tom Martin Jr., uh, who's a good mate of ours. And um, we we did a deal, and that went up the road. And I actually always wanted one of these F12s. That's I, so good. I actually went, so I just went out and bought it because I thought it'd be a good London car. <laughs> London. <laughs> that is your perfect London car. Yeah, absolutely. But of course, uh, my my partner, we've got a little baby, and there's no way to put the baby. That's, so, so it's up for sale. So it's up for sale. <laughs> this is a Maserati Mistral Spider. Nice. Uh, it's been owned by the same guy for 25 years. Um, but these are lovely old things. So I like I like to sell. I like to sell things I like. Modern. Modern. It's a classic. Old, classic. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I just and I try I try and stick to Ferraris and Porsches. Nice. Um, in the main. Uh, but that's a great car for going on a tour around Italy or you could go and How much is that? Uh, I'm asking 300 grand. Right. It's a lot of car for money. Yeah. If you think about a comparable Daytona Spider. So I or a Pista. Yeah, well, I just saw, <laughs> I, or a Pista. So I sold a right hand drive Daytona Spider recently, and that's a three million pound car. So it's 10 times the money of this. Is it 10 times the car? Going up in price? I think it's a sound place to put It's a money. sound investment. It's a sound investment. All right, what we got here then? Right, right hand drive, 512 BDI. I love these. I love these. The only thing about these is they are quite heavy on the steering. Um, okay. And the clutch is heavy. Uh, but they are a great car for, for, for a tour. You Stunning. Know, so if you go down to Europe, they're brilliant. And I actually bought one of these. I bought one of these off your father as well. <laughs> father was great. Father was great to deal with. He really was. Asking 270. Very nice. This is a fiberglass 308, totally original. Really, really nice example. Uh, uh, UK car. Yeah. Right hand drive. Um, unusually in really nice condition. Oh, really? Most of these are. Well, put it this way I've sold quite a few of these over the years. They all seem to be in a lot nicer condition now than they were. When that you remembered. Yeah, back when I remembered, yeah. So people have spent money on how much are, How much are these? I'm asking 140. So it's actually good, good value. Good value. I mean, yeah. it's a long part for the money. And these are really nice to drive. These are super, really? super nice to drive, yeah. Look at that. V8 engine. Oh. Lovely five speed box. Yeah, these are, these are great. Love super, that. Super bit of kit. Okay. We like got these. A, got a right hand right hand center. How much are these? 500? Spot on, spot on. <laughs> spot on. So th this is a Grigio with blue leather. Um, this car has actually been owned uh, by a friend of dad's who's owned lots of really special cars. Um, he's had a short wheelbase and some other really, really interesting cars. Him and his wife are really nice people. They've owned this for the best part of 30 years. Really? And this is actually Alan Mann, uh, sorry, Alan Jones, the F1 driver's car in the 70s. Wow. So that's a that's a really, really nice car for someone. With a good history. Do you know what? For me, provenance means so much. Yeah. And to have one with good provenance that's also in super good condition is, is lovely. So these are on the up. I think this is a very, very good bit of kit. The Daytona yeah. is a super, super good bit of kit. They are. You know, yes, they have heavy steering, but 
Uh, you can fit past here into them, but they're, they're just a great car to go on tour. The nice thing about a Daytona is, um, you see a lot of people who buy Ferraris, they're often led by, in my experience, and I have quite a bit, you know, they're often led by their wives because <laughs> at the end of the day, if their wife's not comfortable in the car, no, you're gonna have to sell it. You're gonna have to sell it. It's a BMW 2002 Turbo. So this car's owned by a really good friend of mine. Um, he's had it for 10 years and it's been completely gone through. It's totally original with regards to the interior and the bodywork, but it's been mechanically gone through top to bottom. And it was in a collection in Luxembourg for quite a number of years, about 15 years, where it was wow. part of a big collection out there. And it's just a lovely thing. I think this is a good car for you for London, Archie. <laughs> Maybe not for me. No, How much is it? It's 95 grand. Oh, I thought it was gonna, you were going to say double that. No, I think that's a long car. Sole investment? Yeah, do you know what? That's a, that's a pretty fun little kit, that. Let's fire it up. Oh, yes. Jeremy's off. In his daily. <laughs> oh, so good. That is perfect. That is what I want. There he goes. Love that. So there we go. What an awesome day it has been. Me and Jeremy are going to get on the phone and we're going to talk about how we can do a deal on the Maranello. It's, uh, he's had to rush off and we, we're going to be in touch because I want to buy it back. And I want you guys to help me here and let me know what you think I should do. Should I buy back my dad's 550 Maranello? It's am amazing to see it, amazing to hear about the history and the condition that it's in and everything about it. Really was an amazing day and Jeremy's so knowledgeable and they work close him and my dad and it, I, I loved hearing the stories and I love hearing stories about him and that car I, I felt I brought me closer to my dad because I remember him picking me up and us driving it and us, us being around it and uh, even the smell of it. It, it was really, it was really unreal. Um, so let me know what you think I should do. I've loved it. I've loved seeing the car. So let me know. Get in the comment. Make sure you check out Jeremy's business down below if you're interested in any of the cars. And he's got more cars coming in and going and he's a really lovely guy. Make sure you check him out on his Instagram page. I'll leave all that below. But thank you to him for his hospitality and allowing me to see the car and let me know what you think I should do. I've loved it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you all. Bye. We spent our days on the coast of something beautiful. We got pulled into the tide of something.